I was born on July 28, 1948, in Iowa City, Iowa. I know so little about that state and I identify even less with its roots. In my mind, my life started when we moved to Iquique, Chile in 1950. Iquique is situated in the Atacama Desert, one of the driest deserts in the world. It never rained the entire 10 years that we were there. Do you see it nestled in between the Pacific Ocean and the Andes Mountains? My parents were educational missionaries for the Methodist Church and moved to Iquique English College to help on that mission. This is what the school looked like when they arrived. The top part of that wooden building was our home. I often wonder what went on in my mother's mind as she approached her new abode. Lots of houses in Iquique don't have much of a roof since it never rains. I remember sitting on the toilet one day and looking up at the screen that served as a roof and staring back at a rat that was ogling me at the same time. Mom tells others how one day we were sitting at the breakfast table and she saw Mama Rat walk through our kitchen with babies following her. This must be why I'm so afraid of rats. Every Monday morning, we gathered to sing El Himno Nacional de Chile. Puro Chile es tu cielo azulado, puras brisas te cruzan también. Pum, pum, pum. My first day in my Long Island music class, the teacher asked us all to pull out a piece of paper and write the first verse of the American National Anthem. I wrote, Oh, say can you see? When the teacher got to my page, he yelled, I said the first verse, not the first line. Whose paper is this? I raised my hand timidly, identified myself, and let him know that I could write the entire Chilean anthem in Spanish if he so desired. La Plaza de Arturo Prat was directly in front of our school. See the mountains in the back? And on the other side of the main drag was the ocean. Oh, we had such fun in the ocean. Do you know that the summer arrives in December in Chile? Thus, we got off for Christmas vacation, which led to our summer break. We couldn't wait until Christmas to have our first day at the beach. Here's a picture of Randy in the front and my mom with me and Ron. I remember vividly that our last week of classes, we were rewarded with a day at the beach at Primeras Piedras, First Rocks. We ate our meals there and had fun the entire day. The older students always tried to walk up El Dragón, the dragon. I think it was the biggest sand dune in the whole world. It was so difficult to climb it since you went up one step and slid down two. I just remember climbing a little ways and rolling down the sand. It was so much fun. This is Pancho, our first pet, and that is Ron with his cowboy out outfit on. I imagine Mom must have made it for him. Little did we know then that Randy would be the cowboy of the family. Do you see the window behind Ron? That is one of the upper class classrooms. I only reached fifth grade, but I know up to then the only person with a book was the teacher. We spent the entire class time copying what she dictated from the book. Then we went home and recopied it in good handwriting and memorized it for the next day. Everyone in the school got one class of English a day from kindergarten to fifth grade. Mom would take me out and teach me separately at home. After fifth grade, the students picked up one subject 
which would be taught in English. The next year it would be two subjects, and so on. By the time they graduated, all their classes were being taught in English. I'm amazed that I finished fifth grade in December in Iquique and entered seventh grade in September in New York. There was no library at IEC, nothing at the school, but my parents must have been excellent teachers. This is my kindergarten class. Do you see me in the front with a doll? Here I'm a little older in my gym class. We had fun at the school. It was a boarding school and we lived on the campus. They were our family. On some Fridays, we were allowed folk dances. It was a Methodist school with many rules. I can tell that this was the 4th of July, a special holiday during our winter days where we celebrated with American games and celebrations. My parents loved popcorn and began a tradition in IEC of having that during certain events. They were so surprised to found, find out that the students liked their popcorn with sugar instead of the salt that we favored. Sometimes we ate at the dining hall with the students. Prayer began every meal. One thing we lacked, among many, is milk. The only fresh milk my mom could find was that of a donkey. I think she said no to that. So every meal began with our calcium pill and a glass full of powdered milk. When we got to the States, Mom was so excited that we could have real milk. Do you know what? We hated it. We were so used to the powdered milk that we could not tolerate the real stuff. Mom began giving us powdered milk with a little real milk each time, increasing the dosage until we no longer yearned for the powder. Isn't that funny? I don't think I could tolerate drinking powdered milk now, but it goes to show that it is all what you are used to. Do you see our basketball court? My dad was a college whiz in basketball and brought it to the school. You can see that uniforms and teams were formed under his tutelage. Every Sunday we walked to church, I think twice or three times that day. In the evening, we walked to the Plaza Central, as did much of the population, to stroll and be with others. I remember those days vividly and missed that compa companionship when I got to the United States, until the malls, which in some ways replaced the use of our plaza. Iquique was a small town where houses were built one next to another and in wood. We only received water two hours each day, which came from a small town in the mountains where it rained. That meant that during the rest of the day, you could not open the faucet and get water. For those two hours, all faucets were open and you collected as much water as you could. We were lucky to live by the school, which had big barrels where they stored the water. We kids only got one bath a week. Everyone was in the tub at the same time, and my mother would heat the water on the stove as she poured in inches for our weekly scrub. One of our biggest fears was a fire. I remember it being said that if you saw the fire from your house, you should begin to take out your belongings into the street. Remember, all houses were made of wood, and they were all connected. If the fire began when there was no water in town, you were in trouble. Communications would begin, and maybe hours would pass before the firefighters had water. Thus, it was not unusual to see a whole block in ashes. My parents were very far away from their home for a very long time. Remember, there were no telephones, Skype, computers, or other ways to communicate. I remember my mom writing a letter home, which would take a month to get there, and the response would take a month to get back to us. 
It was mailed by ship. I never grew up with grandparents nearby, and I'm so happy to have been able to experience that in my adult life. With no other communication, my mother wrote a yearly family letter, which included a photograph. Here are some of the ones that I've collected. The biggest accomplishment that occurred while my parents were in Iquique is the new school building in our new home. I don't know when or how long it took, but I know we were very happy with the move. I was not happy that the boys got to dorm in the new building while all the girls stayed in the old. I think even at that young age, I must have been a feminist. Our school was a secretarial school, thus all students graduated being bilingual secretaries. Some of you may not recognize the circle of typewriters that they were very happy to receive. My parents were able to help some graduates go to the States to pursue their careers at American universities. In my lifetime, <clears throat> I've been very aware of how grateful so many students were of my parents for what they had done for them. Here you see our houses. This building housed the boys' dorm on the top, and the bo bottom were classroom, classrooms for the upper classes. Here you see the new attached to the old. Randy and I in our backyard with our pet perla. This is me in my Iquique English College uniform. College because it's colegio, which in Spanish is the word for private school. This is my last class photo, fifth grade. I'm in the next to the last row from the top, next to my best friends, Ruby, Carmen, and Mildred. My last story for you is when I'm back in the United States. It was 1960. At the age of 12, I returned to my country. My mom takes me to a department store to buy me a dress. All my clothes had been handmade by her up to this time. She's looking at the dresses, but I'm fascinated by something I've never seen before. I see people walking over to, over to it, but I don't recognize it. I ask my mother about it, and she takes me over. She introduces me to a water fountain. I look up at her, and I exclaim, Mom, it's water. It's cold, and it's for free. This has to be the best country in the world. My story doesn't end there, nor my impressions of the United States, but that's all, that's all you are going to get today. Thanks for listening and sharing and part of my, her story. Remember to do the same for the generations that come after you, because we all have a story. I hope to hear yours soon. Judy, Jude, Mom, Mommy, Grandma, Nana, Elfine.